Hey right, fantasy fans, it's Dan here with Retriever Book Reviews, and I'm back with another review for Carpe Juggalum. Uh, it's another Terry Pratchett book in the disc world. Let's get into it. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and making it the best it can be. Well, we're back. Uh, we're doing a review here for Terry Pratchett's Carpe Juggalum. This is the last of the Witches series. Uh, or the traditional Witches series where Granny Weatherwax, uh, Nanny Og, and then, you know, either McGrath Garlic or Agnes is the, are the, the three main witches. Uh, the next kind of Witches series is with Tiffany Aiken. I am looking forward to kind of getting to Tiffany later, but we're here to talk about Carpe Juggalum. So this book, if we're, uh, you know, looking at kind of the trajectory of the witches series this follows masquerade and uh you know this book is actually based around vampires so i'm gonna give you my thoughts on this book uh, really talk about you know why this one actually ended up being a miss for me i think this is actually probably the weakest of the witches books to be honest um i always said kind of weird sisters was my least favorite uh carpe juggalum definitely takes the cake as as the weakest witches book and it might even be one of the weakest discworld books i've read i really didn't connect with it really didn't enjoy it usually with discworld books uh, i want to be reading them I'm, I'm always kind of picking them up and you know excited to get to my next with discworld read and this one I didn't love it. It just, it didn't hit me at all. And I, I really felt disappointed with um, the kind of how this book went. So, uh, you know, we're joined with Agnes, Agnes Knit. She is, uh, you know, the new witch. She's kind of taken over the place of McGrath Garlic as the maiden in this, uh, in the trio of witches. You know, we have our trio, which is supposed to be Granny Weatherwax as the crone, uh, Nanny Og as the mother. And now Agnes Knit as the Maiden. So, <laughs> again, it's different. This book is really different because it starts off with, you know, kind of Granny being in a very dark place, uh, kind of doubting herself and, you know, doubting her place within the witches because we found out that Lankra has a new heir. Uh, McGrath Garlic, who was a former witch, is now married to King Varence, and they have had a child. And so... Uh, Granny kind of sees this as, um, you know, a change in the winds in a sense where does she really belong in this in this coven of witches anymore? And so, uh, you know, in uh, King Varence also at the same time, in his foolishness to be open and inviting to the, the, the naming of his child, he has invited, uh, I guess, a group of vampires and you know we all know that if you invite vampires in it's really hard to kind of get them out so uh that's really kind of where the story kind of leads off and then uh you know we're using a lot of headology and uh hedge witches hedge witch magic to kind of deal with these vampires so let's kind of talk about why i didn't really enjoy this book as much so the first one is you're not really around Granny Weatherwax that much. Granny Weatherwax is the big selling feature of the uh, the Witches series for me. She's clever. She's using her headology. Uh, she's definitely the smartest person in the room. Or um, maybe Nanny Ogg's the smartest person in the room, but she's smart enough not to say it. <laughs> so, But you're really not in the head of Granny in this book. And I find that... Um, the absence of Granny was heavily felt, especially the first like 80 to 100 pages of this book. Granny's not in it. It's it's you're all in the head of Agnes Knit. And Agnes Knit is in two minds about everything. Uh, if you've read the book, you'll understand what I mean that with that. But um, yeah, so the, the lack of Granny in the book, <clears throat> I found really kind of affected the storytelling. Because, you know, you're with this character who's well established, who uh, has a presence on the page and with her there. The witches kind of fall down because you need all three of them to kind of prop the story up. And the ending of the book was a lot better when Granny Weatherwax did come into play. But that earlier first act was a little bit weaker without her. So again, I'm going to continue on about the other characters. So you have Agnes and uh, Nanny Og. Agnes is, gets a lot more development in this book from where she was in Masquerade. Uh, it was nice to see Agnes's development and her kind of... Uh, blooming into becoming a full witch but um, again Agnes isn't the character I'm as interested in you know it's great to see her growth great to see that expansion of the disc world witches but I really want to be around Nanny Og and I want to be around Granny and those are the ones I really cared about but and just the the in two minds like this character you know she has a split personality disorder so she you're flipping between Agnes and Perdita which 
uh, Perdita, you know, did save Agnes a lot of the time because uh, that was one of the uh, themes of the books with the vampires is they, they kind of glamour you, right? You know, they hypnotize you a little bit to just kind of, you just become passive and you just accept everything they're doing. And, you know, with her being in kind of two minds uh, or the split personality, uh, she's not really affected by their glamour, which was kind of interesting to see in Terry's kind of manipulation of that. But um, I will say the the um, how that kind of works and the vampires work in this book. You know, they're they're made out to be very clever and modern vampires. Um, but it just it didn't like it just wasn't satisfying, right? In the end, for me, where um, the villains usually with disparate villains are very kind of um, they're kind of clever and they're kind of um, like caricatures. They really like have really strong personalities. And I found in these ones that I just didn't connect with them and that they just didn't really kind of jump off the page at me. And I was never really excited to kind of learn more about the vampires. So in the end of this book, when you find out, because you know the vampires are going to lose. It's a Discworld book. The baddies aren't going to win. But when it was kind of revealed and all said and done at how they had lost, it was just kind of unsatisfying. And you're, you're kind of waiting for the other sh the shoe to fall and it never really did. And it just, it just didn't have the impact as some of the other witches books, you know, with Weird Sisters, Witches Abroad, even Masquerade, right? It just kind of fell flat in the end. And um, I really just, I, again, I said, like, I, I just didn't enjoy my time with this book. Like, uh, the pacing did feel off in this book because I, it, it was really a book of two acts, I felt like that, where the first act, where it's a bit more funny, a bit more hokey, and, you know, you're the characters aren't taking these vampires seriously until they really have to start taking the vampires seriously. And then the end of the book where um, it's all kind of coming together and how they're going to be the, the vampires. It just, it just felt really kind of disjointed. So the first part didn't really care about the second part. I was a little bit more engaged because we had all of our characters on screen. But other than that, like um, it just, it did nothing for me. So there was this other running kind of storyline going in the back of the book where um, we're you know, following the character of Hodges Arg. So Hodges Arg is a falconer, a royal falconer for the kingdom of Lancre. And uh, he's one of those guys where he's just devoted to birds. He doesn't care about anything else. He knows his place in the world. He knows his betters. And he, uh, but he discovers that there might be a phoenix wandering around in Lancre. So I liked the story of the phoenix and Hodges Arg. <laughs> Uh, Hodges Arg's uh, role in finding the Phoenix and you know interacting with Granny and some of the other characters, I thought that was really well done. Um, it didn't kind of plan it like pan out as well as I thought it would in the end, where it wasn't like you know the Phoenix didn't play as big as a role as I thought it would in the finale of the book, but it was still good. It was a fun little story that kind of followed throughout the whole book. But one thing I did like with his name Hodges Arg, because that's you 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 encounter Hodges Arg. I'm trying to remember what book now. I want to say it's in Lords and Ladies where you first kind of get introduced to him. So you learn how uh, characters kind of get their names in this world. Uh, they're either announced by like a father figure or like a religious figure. So, um, you know, with Hodges Arg, I'm assuming his whole family, they, I think it's a set, you know, it's, it's mentioned that his whole family is, uh, they've been falconers since time in memoriam. And uh, uh, you learn that once a child is named uh, and if, you know, whatever said, that's the name. So I pictured with Hodges Arg where his father was naming him and he was a royal falconer and he had a falcon on his finger on his on his arm and it bit his finger. And he's like, my child's name is Hodges Arg. So, uh, so that's what I at least expected. But I really liked the character. I really liked the, um, <clears throat> the whole story with the Phoenix and him. There is one more character I want to mention that I haven't touched on and that is Mighty Oats. So he is, I guess, uh, a a priest or a preacher from the uh, the Church of Om, and uh, he has a really good presence in the book. I thought he was probably one of the best characters in this book, next to Granny and uh, Nanny. Uh, I really like his kind of contrast between where he's really having kind of a crisis of faith, and he is, uh, you know, you know, trying to combat these vampires, and also kind of, you know, have a, he's having a religious schism himself. So. I really kind of liked this character, Mighty Oats, or Mightily Oats. Uh, in the end, he uh, he rose to the occasion. He was always kind of interesting. Uh, he actually earned a lot of respect from these 
characters within this book and I thought he was genuinely enjoyable when you know you you really this is a book I think when you're reading his parts you'll enjoy it more if you've read more of Terry Pratchett's work especially Small Gods because there's a lot of references to Brother and some of the events of uh, what happened in Small Gods so uh, and it, just an understanding of the Church of Alm so I really like that. I thought this character was fantastic in the end. I really kind of connected with him, even though he's like a, like a, not a religious zealot, but he's a religious character and he always kind of brings his religion into play. But uh, I felt like his conclusion to his story in this book was great. I, it was satisfying and um, I'd like to see more, but who knows, I doubt we will. But uh, I was glad he was there. He was a real kind of balancing character uh, within this book. So that's it, guys. I'm going to give my rating now for Carpe Juggalum. So this is this is a weak Discworld book for me. Um, I might enjoy it more on a reread, I think. So I'm going to give this one a C tier. can safely buy on ebook. Uh, that's where I would get it, guys. If you're going to... I'm not going to get rid of my copy because I got a beautiful uh, like hardcover edition here. But uh, if you're going to pick this one up, pick it up on, on ebook. Um, again, just wasn't for me, but just because it wasn't for me doesn't mean it won't be for you. So that's my review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.